In the Bible, Paul explains that everyone has two bodies, a physical body and a spiritual body. Mediums use their spiritual bodies when they act as a communication bridge between the physical and spirit worlds. As a spirit speaks, mediums hear the information using the ears of their spiritual bodies, then repeat the information to other physical people. Mediumship is synonymous with the biblical term, gifts of the spirit. The focus of our show, Making Known the Unknown, is to provide knowledge through the use of Reverend Hewitt's mediumship and Sidney Schwartz's research. The Bible contains the history of psychic events, along with man-made doctrines created by priests centuries ago. This show will explore the untruths which the Bible entrenched into our society. By uncovering these untruths, we encourage people everywhere to think for themselves with a critical mind. Hello, and welcome to Making Known the Unknown. I'm your host, Tina Tarek, and with me tonight are our regular guests, Sydney Schwartz, middle school teacher from Hackensack, New Jersey, and Bible researcher of 25 plus years. Welcome, Sydney. Hi, Tina. And Reverend Carl Hewitt, founder and pastor of Gifts of the Spirit Church in Chesterfield, Connecticut, and medium. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. Uh, as some of you viewers may or may not know, without these two gentlemen, this show does not happen. As a result of Mr. Schwartz's research and Mr. Hewitt's, shall I say, information that's been bestowed to him as a medium from spirit, the two of them have uncovered some amazing truths. And as a result of that, tonight, our show, which will be titled, What is Making Known the Unknown?, will be sort of a recap of the information that these two gentlemen have come to know and we would like all of you to know. So because of that, we feel it's very important that you put a tape into your VCR, ask your friends and family to do so at their homes if they're watching this tonight, because there's a lot of information here that you will come to use in many days to come. Now, with that, we have a little bit of a clip that we'd like to share with you. Um, and that clip refers to exactly the goal of a program of this type. If we could have that clip, please. Society presents Derek Partridge, Jordan Maxwell, as special guest, Bill Jenkins. It is at this point I would like to remind that you should always be aware of any authority, institution, government, church, religion, anyone who is in a position of any authority that tells you that you should not read something in particular or you should not look at a set of facts or a particular book. Because usually anyone in authority who doesn't want you to read something in particular must have something to hide. Because the intellectual mind of the human being cannot grow if it is not allowed to look at all of the facts. Okay. That is another group that also performs research very similar to what Mr. Schwartz and Mr. Hewitt do. And they have been kind enough to share some of their research in a videotape. And so we were sharing with you a very small piece of that tape about their intent and their reason for uncovering this truth. And one of the first things I'd like to do, because really without uh, this information coming through Reverend Hewitt, a lot of this really would not have spiraled into what it is right now. And so the first question I have is, I understand, Carl, that you're a medium. Yes. Can you tell me 
what that is and how it works. Well, first of all, if we go back about 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, a uh, person with the gift of the Spirit would have been called a prophet. And even before that, there were different names or different labels to describe that person who was gifted. And, uh, but today, uh, or about 200 years ago, I think it was, that they started calling us medium simply because we were, we've, we were in the middle between the physical world and the world of spirit. So this is why they call us mediums. And um, I've been mean, called some worse things, you know. <laughs> and um, so uh, a medium is one that under certain conditions they become clear audience, which means clear hearing. And uh, we become uh, clairvoyant, which we're able to see. Not with the uh, physical eyes now. We're talking about the spirit eyes because we're born with two bodies. And uh, it is the spirit body that works through us. So evidently, and I shouldn't say evidently, but I was told that uh, by the voices that they knew me before I was placed in the womb. And as I trace back my grandmother, my mother's mother <coughs> was also a medium, but she, um, uh, she projected all of her energy into healing. And she became a fabulous healer. But in her day, she had to do this at night when the lights were out. People would come to the house and she would do it in the dark simply because she was afraid of being burned at the stake, which is what they, they used to do to the gifted people, mm -hmm. see? And if you go into the Bible, my God, you can read all through the Bible where, and the voice of the Lord came to me, and this and that or the other. But in those days, they would call that invisible person that's speaking to them, they would call that person out of respect, the Lord, you see? Okay. And so when I go into the altered state of consciousness to do a reading for somebody, I am repeating to that person what I am now hearing clear audiently, you see? Okay. And uh, there's a lot of times that I have trouble with that simply because I don't want to present that person with what I'm hearing because it bothers me and I know darn well it's going to bother them. So I have, I have my problems with that. So in one respect, it's a gift, it's or, a gift or something you're fortunate to have, but on the other hand, it could be a burden. But you see, like. when Jesus was on the earth plane, when he was in the physical form, he taught the boy, his boys, his students, mm -hmm. in the upper room, he, he really taught them the gifts of the Spirit. That's not mentioned in the Bible anywhere. And after he died, don't forget he was a threat to the priest, and they were, it was the priest that destroyed him, that horrible death he went through. And then after he died, he selected a medium, which was Saul at the time, church changed his name to Paul, and it was through him talking through Paul that we have all this information in the chapter 12, uh, verse, uh, chapter 12, first verse. It says, Thy shall not have you ignorant of the gifts of the Spirit. That was coming directly from Jesus through this medium or through that prophet at the time. And all through the chapters of Corinthian, he was teaching us, still teaching. And I don't know why I was selected to do this work, but I am doing the work now the best I can possibly do because having the gift as a child, not knowing anything about it, and going to all the churches trying to get some help from the, uh, the ministers, and I was totally an outcast. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And the, way, <coughs> and the way I was treated, uh, I just couldn't deal with the churches. Now, my understanding from having uh, spoken to other psychics, shall we say, is that some of the information that a psychic might share in a quote-unquote reading <coughs> is somehow different than the information that you will share with someone as a medium. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, a psychic is one that really can pick up on the uh, physical side of life. I mean, uh, everyone, to some extent, is psychic. Because the word psychic alone means mind and soul. Everybody has a mind, everybody has a soul. It becomes very simple. And so, a lot of times, a psychic, I don't like that word at all, it's been tainted very badly, 
and uh, the psychic could tell a person things that I hate to say it, but comes into their own imagination. Really. But when I do a reading, I I want I want the facts to come through. I don't want any any hodgepodge. Okay. I want the facts to come through. And there's a there was a young lady in this very city. I remember this so well. I never could get it out of my mind. She was, I would say she was about 21. And it's possible she might even be listening to this program and she would remember me from years back. And the entity told me to tell her that coming July, I think the reading took place in January or February, coming July, her husband will become very interested in a motorcycle and he can't buy it unless she signs the paper because she was making as much money as he was making. Mm -hmm. And so she, oh, I don't have to worry about that. He doesn't like motorcycles. I said, lady, I am not talking about the now time frame. I'm talking about a future time. Oh, I won't worry about that. And so she was told that if he buys that motorcycle, he will also lose his life on that bike. And she, she left my place. And right away, she went to her favorite clergyman and played the tape to him. And he said, don't pay any attention to that. He said, that's fortune telling. Don't pay any attention to that. Throw that thing away. And so she went home. Instead of throwing it away, she just threw it in a dresser drawer. And, but when July did come, they went to uh, some uh, motorcycle show. And uh, he fell in love with one of the motorcycles there. And she kept reminding him of the reading. And he kept saying, don't believe in that junk. And I won't use the other words that he said. And, uh, she uh, finally signed the paper so that he could get financing from the bank. And he got the motorcycle. And uh, two or three weeks later, he was zipping down the road on the motorcycle. And somebody pulled out in front of him. And he hit that car. And he went flying like a rocket through the air. Naturally, he was killed. It was then she took the tape right after the funeral. And she went to see the same clergyman again. Mm -hmm and f forced him practically to, to listen to this tape again. And then he said, well, there are some people that can do this. And she hit her fist on the, ta on the desk and said, why didn't you tell me that the first time? You indicated the first time that there is no such thing. Now you tell me that there are some people. And my husband is dead because you told me what you s did. You see, is it all over the world, practically, I think, that religion doesn't want the people to know the truth about this, and yet it's in the Bible blatantly. Mm. This man found that out, and he's found more in the Bible about it than I ever dared find out, because I never had the time to go into a detail of that. So now the information you're given is what we would call life-altering information. Yes. That people can make a choice about, as opposed yes. to maybe somebody saying, something not as profound or as life-altering. Yes. So you really, you get the deep stuff, the heavy stuff yes. shared with you. Now, um, shared to you, excuse me. Um, when you'd mentioned uh, uh, Sydney's uh, researching the Bible and finding information and answers over the years, I understand that um, how the two of you had met was actually through a reading, mm -hmm. and out of that reading, uh, spurned a couple of very interesting uh, tidbits with respect to the Bible changing. Now, Sydney, I don't know if you wanted to give me a little bit of that history right there and how it well, started you. Well, I, uh, I went to Carl for a, a reading, and uh, it was quite a profound experience. And I ended up seeing him again two more times at three, in the three-month intervals. At the third, after my third reading, he said, you know, it's too bad you live so far away in New Jersey. I'd invite you to be in, in my second development classes. And I said to him, well, I said, don't let that stop you. I said, I drive up to, to be in them because I didn't know of any other mediums, you know, that I could uh, attend classes like that. So I started coming to class, and then I started to learn things at that point. And um, then I started getting involved in research, and eventually um, the entity uh, A1, the angel without a name, wanted to um, con contact me and talk to me. And... Um, Revenue it went into trance, and uh, 
our first conversation, my first conversation with, or my first encounter with an angel, which is the title of the book, was all about the fact that, uh, that A1 was telling me that the Bible was changed. And because I grew up in an Orthodox mm -hmm. conservative background, I, uh, I didn't believe that. So I was arguing like crazy, you know, just like Moses in the, in the Bible was arguing with the spirit that he didn't want to be the leader and mm -hmm. to find somebody else to speak to the people. I was arguing with Awan that this couldn't be, you know, well, maybe the Christian Bible was changed, but not the Jewish Bible, because mm -hmm. they, they count all the letters and the words and everything else. And uh, so finally, Awan got tired of my arguments and basically said, well, he said, I'll tell you what, why don't you disprove me? Why don't you prove me wrong? Go out and look at some Bibles and, and start and start comparing them, and you tell me if they haven't been changed. And so I ended up doing that. I ended up looking at some very old Bibles and comparing certain verses, and I, lo and behold, anyone was correct. So a lot of the older verses, verses were a lot more psychically correct and a lot more clearer on, on the psychic phenomena than the new ones. Because, see, the older ones, the first Bible in English was, was printed in 1384, and uh, back then, it wasn't a big deal because not that many people were reading, you know, so they didn't have to really watch what they were saying as much because, they, you know, the people weren't reading the Bible. But as the years, you know, progressed and more and more people got educated, more and more people were reading the Bible, well, then they started to, to kind of bleach out. I call it, it's like a curtain that you hang up, you know, and you come back 200 years later and everything's bleached out. All the psychic phenomena gets bleached out mm -hmm. over, over the years and they find ways to say things that, uh, that are very different. Than, than what's originally there, let alone all the, all the words that are in Hebrew that have psychic meaning that don't arrive in English that way because there's no real equivalent for it in our language. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's all sorts of reasons why, the, why this doesn't come across. Now, how many different Bibles have you researched? Well, it's over 250 at this point. My goodness. It's not quite 260, but it's somewhere, somewhere in between. There's two, not all of them are full Bibles. Some of them are just partial. Some are just Old Testaments. Some are just New Testaments. Some are just the, ep the epistles. Uh, but uh, there's over 250 Bibles. That's amazing. Carl, did you want to the, add something? The thing I wanted to mention for the viewers is the fact that you didn't mention who A1 was, and there are people out there wondering who, who, who okay. he is. Okay. Well, A1 means angel without a name. Okay. He refuses to give me his name because he said every time that anyone came from his kingdom to this world working through a medium, somebody created religion in their name. And he said that on your planet you have 12,000 different religions. And he says you certainly don't need another one. Therefore, I'm not going to tell you who I am, but you can, if you insist on a name, you can call me a1, and he said, picture the words, angel without a name. I said, all right. He says, take the first letter of each one and put them together and you could call me A1. And he said, that is the name I will stay with. And this is one of the, I'll call them, heavy hitters yes. that communicates yes. through you on a regular basis. Very, very ascended master. And, and based on that information, Sydney and you both uh, travel the world. Yeah. to find these answers yes. or confirm the information you've been given. Yes. Okay. And I have, excuse me, I have gone to places and I always spend my own money. I never ask anybody, we were taking up collection, I need some extra money. It was my own earnings that I've always spent for, to bring this knowledge back to the, to the world, to the people. And I'm still doing that today. And uh, I, just, I just want people to know the truth of what they have taught me and how I'm to teach the people. Open your mind and think for yourself. You reminded me that we have a mind, we have a brain, but it's not being used. Now you just referred to your church, Gifts of the Spirit Church. Yeah. Um, that is an unusual name. I'm sure many people but have never heard it's that. It's in the Bible. And that was my next question. Mm -hmm. So what inspired you to call it Gifts of the Spirit Church? They wanted me to do it because when I started uh, studying for the ministry, which I didn't want to, because I'm not a member of religions, how I was treated as a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, these several people said, you know, you're, you're a fantastic medium. I said, what's that? They said, you don't even know it. Like, just like most mediums, they don't realize it. You, you oftentimes see things that nobody else can see, and, mm -hmm. and you talk about things that, that uh, no way you could know it because spirit is working through you. Right. And so uh, when I was, after I was ordained, I just listened 
to what they told me, and they said, you are to create a temple, and it is to be called Gifts of the Spirit Church. A lot of people looked, looked at me kind of funny when I said, it's not going to be a spiritualist church. It's going to be Gifts of the Spirit Church. Mm. And so this is the way it's been. And Gifts of the Spirit comes from a section of the Bible. Yeah, 1 That's Corinthians right. 12, first, okay. first verse. And these gifts of the Spirit, you talked about that a little bit when we started, are in fact the many things that mediums are gifted with. You said clairaudience, right. audience, clairvoyance, and so on. Some people, I've got a young man with me now. I'm really proud of this guy because he uh, developed very slowly uh, to be a healer. And when I saw what he was capable of doing, I almost went through the ceiling. <laughs> I was so excited about this. And uh, he's turned out to be the most wonderful person. He's down to earth, and he's a powerful healer. And he's only scratched the surface. Really? And you know him. You've met him. Yes, I have. Now, that is somebody who is a student he's of yours. A student, yeah. So there's a big teaching yeah. uh, aspect of this church. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, that's a slow process. Mm. There's a lot of people that has the potential to be a, an instrument of the Spirit, but most of them go off on, a, uh, on an ego trip, and they don't, they don't get anywhere. You know, in other words, if I selected 20 people, you know, uh, to come into the class, there would be some of them that were starting to develop, just starting, just scratching the surface, and that person got such an ego, they wanted to prove to everybody, that, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And what they do is, eventually they say, well, I don't need Carl any longer. I can go off on my own. So they think they're going to hang up a shingle and, you know, make a ton of money. And the thing is, the teachers in spirit that are with me at the school, mm -hmm. in the class, mm -hmm. they don't go with them any longer. Okay. They only teach them while they're there. And there'll come a time that that person will develop that they can use them, the spirit people can use them. It is then that the spirit people uh, me. tells me, <clears throat> tells me that this person is to be certified as a medium or this cert person is certified as a healer, you see? And that is when I certify them. And I don't certify anybody that do not pass that test of spirit. So now, uh, people hear about your church. They're only interested. And in, okay, so this is word of mouth. They're interested in what uh, information you have to share with them. They go there, and then they begin attending classes. This yeah. is very different than you would see, I think, in your average church, unless you want to talk about maybe a Bible school or there's something like that. There's not sure. one. There's not one cell in my body that's jealous of a genuine medium. Not one. Okay. Because if there was, do you think that I would expose you people, because both of you are still students of mine, I would expose you to some of these people that claim to be mediums? As my mother would say, they're not even well done, let alone being a medium. What's the expression that I'm looking for? Um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear? Mm -hmm. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Exactly. Is it, it like is a that? a true story. With respect to uh, people or spirit entities who come there to work with or through your students? Yes. As we have here in the studio, one of my students that is here from uh, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and the day will come, the day will come that the teachers will appear to him simply because his auric field has been expanding. You see? In other words, he'll be ready. Okay. He'll be ready. Because the uh, auric field is the lowest frequency of light on the planet that comes from our soul. Each person has a light around their body, but these cameras will not take a picture of that light. Okay. It's only through curly and photography will that system pick up that light, you see? Okay. And the light, the average light is an off-white. But for instance, if you, if a woman conceived, if she conceived, the moment of conception mm -hmm. changes the color of the light from off-white to a gold rose color. It's very hard to describe that color. And let's say someone in spirit is connected with her through her family ties. Right. And that person is ready now to come back 
in a physical body. Well, let's say that person chooses her as the vehicle and comes and stays in the light field around the body, not inside, around the body, stays in the auric field mm -hmm. up until about 96 days, I believe it is, and then that person lowers their vibration down seven levels and enters through that lady's, uh, through her solar plexus, mm -hmm. seats itself into the chest of this little baby that's growing there in her womb. Mm -hmm. And at the moment it does that, that baby starts kicking because there is a new energy inside of that child that was not there before. Mm -hmm. Up to that point, that baby is another organ of this mother. And then, at nine months later, the child is ready to come into the world. And there are other spirit people connected with that one spirit that entered here. Mm -hmm. They stay around that baby. And so when the child gets old enough to crawl or to even murmur or even talk, mm -hmm. and the parents will say, did you notice the child has an imaginary playmate? That child does not have an imaginary playmate. That child is, has real playmates, spirit playmates, because the child can still see. It can see with its, because mm -hmm. right behind the ear on both sides, mm -hmm. there's a bone, that, a little bone that protrudes out there, just like a bump. The s brain cells behind that are open with that child. That enables the child to see have second sight. It enables the child to hear what the mother, father do not hear. You understand? Mm -hmm. So there's communication between the spirit people and that little child. And there's a lot of people are watching this program right now will f remember some child in their family had, had imaginary playmates. They weren't imaginary at all. They were real. And as that child, that person grows up, now and then the spirit friends will appear to them, talk to them, sometimes scares them to death because they've been indoctrinated with this garbage that it's the devil and all of that. And so they stay with them. And when the end of their life comes, if they live to be 90 years old, mm -hmm. and the moment the heart stops, they're there waiting for them and they recognize them. Wow. So people can be born with the ability to hear and see yes. entities. Yes. And these entities most likely will be the ones that are familiar to them as in family from maybe another lifetime. But you see with me, for some reason or another, the, this, the part of the, uh, the cells back here on both sides did not shut down. Okay. As an average, a person, uh, a child sits down between three and a half and six years old. Okay. They shut down and then no longer will the parents say, that the child has imaginary playmates. Okay. You see, when they shuts down, they don't see or hear anymore. So the child could be taught right out of that information. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And then the other question that comes up that I have is, if people are coming into these development classes, are these people all coming in with the cells opened or have they been closed as children and now they have a chance to open they them have again? A, they've been closed as children. Really? Yeah. So I, I remember that you've mentioned before that everyone is psychic to oh, some everybody's extent. Everybody's psychic because okay. it means soul and mind. So everybody has a mind. Everybody okay. has a we soul. We all have that. All right. So you have it. But it's but it's beyond that that you deal with and that but you're it's talking the ignorance, about. It's the ignorance of what religions have been teaching because remember the soul records and holds knowledge. This is why I've told people that knowledge is your passport into forever, and I use the word forever rather than heaven because we do continue living. We do continue living. We come back, we live in the physical body for approximately 70 years, and then when we die, we go into another dimension and we live there approximately 70 Earth years. And then we reincarnate and we come back again. Now you, man you mentioned something about knowledge is your passport into forever. That is in fact the motto of your church. That's right. And can you go into a little more depth about what's, what's so important about having knowledge? Isn't it in our brains? I don't understand no, this. No, knowledge I mean, is stored that in the, the soul. The brain's dead when the body's dead. Okay. Makes sense, doesn't it? Yes, it does. When the body is dead, the brain is mm. dead. Okay. Knowledge is stored in the soul. And the soul, the soul is an energy field. 
and it's right behind the breastbone there, out of harm's way. And it's only one-eighth of an inch away from the heart itself. Really? And when a person says, I felt it in my heart, no, you didn't. You felt it in your soul, because the soul controls emotion. Hmm. Am I taking up too much of your time? No. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> um, the, the question that I had about uh, knowledge is your passport into forever, I'm, I'm wondering about, because I've also heard you discuss that when you do die, whatever knowledge that is in your soul really kind of dictates where you go when you die. That's right. And you have, you have some knowledge that was given to you by entities in the other dimensions yep. about the different places they have told you and shown you. I don't know if you want to share a little <laughs> bit about that. Then we're going to jump over to, be, to, to Sydney to be fair here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jesus said, in my father's house are many dimensions. Mm. I know there's a lot of people out there who want to take your Bible and throw it at me. Because you're going to say, in my father's house are many mansions. That was changed in the year 325. In my father's house are many dimensions. Because as I've said before, if you were a musician and you passed from this plane, you're going to go where other musicians go. And there, you probably have an orchestra of 50,000 people. And when people, some people hear celestial music, there is nothing on earth like it to hear an orchestra of 50,000 people and they're playing like a violin. Mm. Now somebody who's clairaudient could hear that. Yes. Okay. I've heard music and uh, it's only the last few years that I've been bothered with uh, tapes and CDs, mm. those things. Tell me about what I've heard you mention with respect to hospitals in the other dimension because oh. I think many of our viewers have a certain understanding that would probably put them in this exact location. A person that dies and goes into the other dimension with no knowledge stored in the soul, mm. they wind up in a hospital over there and I refuse to believe there was such a place in the other dimension. I really did. And it was in 1997 that they proved it. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. 1997 that they proved it. And that was the worst experience that I ever had in my life. I left my body and I went into this other place, this hospital, and I tried to figure out how big it was. And the answer was, when you go outside at night and you look at, gaze at the stars, and you wonder how far it is from where you are to the star, he said, this is what you could say about this place. Hmm. Because they've been billions, billions now of people passing from this earth plane into the other dimension with absolutely no knowledge at all, none whatsoever. And they're the ones that have to wind up in the hospital to be cared for by the ascended masters that have gone over there. Now, why are they in a hospital? And you've mentioned that they're sleeping in this hospital? They're in a sleep state. They don't know where they are. They don't even know what to do because there's absolutely nothing recorded in their soul because the only thing recorded in their soul is recycled ignorance. And that recycled ignorance doesn't tell them anything when they get into that world. Wasn't there some connection with them waiting for Jesus to wake them up or something yes, like that? Yes, they're really, they've really been programmed that when they die, uh, they'll go to sleep. Mm. And when he wakes up, he'll come and get them. He's not asleep. Okay, so this is connected to the second coming or people that believe that Jesus will yeah, rise right. again, mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. And, and I guess that's there. why I wanted to make that connection because I believe a big majority of the people in this culture um, have somehow hooked that information or hooked that knowledge. I'm going to make a bold statement here. Mm. I don't usually do that, but I'll make a bold <laughs> statement. I mean, he's got more sense than to come back here. Okay. Because he said that this world is inhabited by ignorant people because they've never used their own mind. They do not think for themselves. He says they go there and they'll stay and they'll take everything that this person tells them, regardless of ridiculous it was, you know, about the devil and all of that. He said all of that was man-made to frighten the people to get them to come to church. And he so, says all of my teachings, meaning his, now he's mm, talking, okay. all of my teachings have been changed. And the reason we're doing this show is to try is to, to get help people, people to open their mind and Absolutely. think for themselves. To help them when they get on the other side. And hopefully they won't have to wait till they get on the other side to realize that this is true.
but in fact you have had people who didn't believe it in this lifetime pass on words and since then have come back and communicated that to you, haven't you? Oh yes. Uh, I've had people that I handled a funeral for that communicated with me while their body was in the box right in front of me there, communicating with me from the other dimension. Mm. People don't wait until it's too late. Learn it, absorb it now, because it will help. And it will help with respect to another, um, another uh, aspect of where you go in the other dimension yeah. that you shared with me, with me a little bit about right before the show, and I'm very interested in that. And that has to do with, and I know this sounds funny to our viewers, but it has to do with uh, people becoming globs. Well, Can let's, you tell me a little let's about, face about it, that? the other body that goes on mm -hmm. is a body of energy. Okay. And if there is no if there is no instructions or no knowledge stored in the soul and the person dies, that energy is going to leave the body mm -hmm. because the moment that the heart stops uh, gives birth to the spirit, the spirit leaves. It's as natural as that baby having to come into the world at the end of nine months. Okay. It's a, a very natural thing. Okay. So if there's no knowledge stored in the soul, then that suppose that energy body could very well become a glob of energy. Now this is very hard for the average person to understand. Right. And if they live on a say on a farm and they love that farm, they would be still there. And sometimes certain sensitive people would feel the presence of somebody near them. You know, they turn around, mm. they don't see anything, but there's somebody there with them. And the poor person that's over there doesn't have any knowledge at all, and they, they might think it's their imagination. It's very hard for me to find the right words mm. to talk about this, but I'm very familiar with it. It, it. Would this be something comparable to what people would interpret as a haunted house? Yes. Or, or just spook spirits in that respect maybe? Yes. Okay. There's okay. a house over here in um, Franklin. Mm -hmm. Never forget this. This is when I took all of my students over there because they said the house was haunted. And then we found out the house had been sold one time after another, you know, sold. Mm -hmm. and, but nobody would ever say that it was haunted. Somebody would get in there and they would hear a woman crying and they'd hear a baby crying. Well, I decided they wanted me to go over there and whatever the, I was, whatever this I, I did, they wanted me to do, you understand? Uh, they didn't say bring holy water. I would have went and got it out of the faucet if I did. So um, I told the people, I said, I will do all I can, but I can't make any promises. So I took all my students with me, only to get there and find out there were cars up and down the road of people that they invited. Oh that this guy's coming over there and, remo and remove the spooks. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I was pretty much insulted. And uh, so I didn't think anything was going to happen because you have all these doubters and scoffers mm -hmm. creating all this negative energy that I have to deal with. But as we sat around and talked and things calmed down a little bit, I started hearing the voice, uh, a man's voice, a woman's voice, and a child's voice. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out that the house originally was owned by some whaler, and uh, he was out at sea, off, way off Cape Cod somewhere, and got caught in a storm and lost his life out there. In the meantime, the wife was home with double pneumonia, and the little girl was three years old, and she was trying to put some wood in this big old fireplace, the one you can walk into. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, she was trying to put some wood in there or something. The poor little thing, she was so uh, cold. But she got her petticoat on fire and the poor little thing burned to death in that house. The same night the mother died oh my of double pneumonia. And at the same time, the father, that same week, the father uh, lost his life out there. And he was always calling his wife. The wife was always calling the baby. And this was what they were hearing in, the, in this building in this house mm. and uh, we found out who it was and when I told him that they're on different uh, they're in different dimensions right. that's why they couldn't find each other right. and uh, they got together that night and there's never been a sound in the building Isn't since. Isn't that something? Wow. It's what some people call rescue in the spirit but to me it's more than that. Right. You've helped some souls. Yes. Yeah who seem to be stuck. 
but if they were taught the truth from the church. Right. There you go. And they died. Right. They would have the knowledge yeah. and they would know about the different dimensions. Right. This is what burns me up. I get so angry when I think of the lies that they've just twisted around mm. to control the people. And if you don't do this and that or the other, the devil's going to get you. Mm. <laughs> I mean, oh. I'm going to make a little bit of a stretch here, but really this falls under the category of, of psychic phenomena. And we're in this series now that's referring to psychic phenomena, but in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. And what I find interesting is that, and I'm going to turn this over to Sydney now, um, I'm going to actually ask you a little bit about the definition of psychic phenomena, if you will, and how it seemed to be that in biblical times it was perfectly acceptable for these things to go on, and they were going on all the time, but for Reverend Hewitt here to do this, or anyone else in this time frame, it seems to be taboo. But, but first, let's, let's touch upon the psychic phenomena. What, what does that mean to well, you? Well, psychic, the word psychic, as Reverend Hewitt said, means soul, soul and mind. So the... Uh, it could actually be called soul phenomena just as easily as psychic phenomena. And when, uh, when the soul uh, of a spirit is over on the other dimension and they're communicating with the medium here, it's their spirit body, it's their soul that's communicating with the soul of the medium, so therefore it's soul phenomena, it's psychic phenomena. Okay. Um, this, this type of, co of communication was very common in, in biblical times and, and people understood it and used it constantly. Uh, but as, as religions got more institutionalized, and the priesthood got, got uh, entrenched. The priesthood who's, who su was supposed to have these gifts didn't. And, uh, and they were jealous of the prophets who did. And that's why in the Bible you can read Jeremiah and Isaiah and Hosea all uh, condemning the, pro the, uh, the priests because they, they weren't carrying out what God really had, in had intended. Jeremiah in chapter 7 gets very, very adamant about it around verse 21. And uh, so, so that, that's, uh, there, there was a conflict even in biblical times between the priests and the prophets, and it's, you know, it's still going on today but between the religions and mediumship. Well, didn't uh, Jesus perform some of the gifts of the Spirit and, in fact, demonstrate psychic phenomena in the Bible? Sure he did. They didn't seem to have a problem with him initially, I who, should who, say. Who didn't have a problem? The priests did. They didn't like him. The Pharisees were, were very much against Jesus. So they, they were constantly talking, talking badly about him. And in okay. fact, it, sa it says in there, in the Bible, that, uh, that they wanted to arrest him, but they, they didn't do that because they, they, the people knew he was a prophet and they were afraid to, because the people always would protect their prophets. Oh, I see. So this is something like behind the scenes that we really didn't know. We really only focused on his his torturous death. Right. We really didn't see that the whole time. More of the people, it seemed, would have respect for him, but the people in power were maybe right. threatened by him. Yes. What a horrible death he went through. Mm. God. There's about horrible. 13 different types of, of phenomena uh, for, you know, for the gifts of the Spirit, and Jesus was the only prophet in the Bible who performed each and every one of them. Okay. Uh, so uh, he's, he's, uh, he was the most powerful medium of the Bible. Now, uh, another question I had was just about that, um, that performing any of this was considered taboo. It was evil or the devil's work. Um, it seemed when people in power were threatened by it, but at other, or other times it seemed to be okay. And again, I'll go back to Reverend Hewitt here. People think that what he does now, and, is, and he, they have told him that this is evil or the devil's work. Well, you, you have to understand that, that the... Uh, that all came into being after, really after the Bible came, came to a close. Because in the Council of Constance, I think it was in, in 391 or about, about that time, they actually declared that, that uh, pro prophecy had come to an end and that with, with the apostles, the church decided that. And after that point, no one was allowed to do practice the gifts of the Spirit. So in biblical times, it, it was much more accepted because there were all these people doing it. But the church wa wa wanted people to, to not be able to have access to, 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 um, to, to information coming from the other dimension because the, the ascended masters in the other dimension would constantly give forth information as they do today, which contradicts church doctrine and, and shows the fallacies on, upon which it was built. And therefore, the church didn't want that, the people to understand that. And that's why they, they uh, uh, St. Jerome, um, in the late 300s convinced Pope Damius 
to, uh, to eliminate all mediumship from the churches because we at, before that time, uh, the, uh, the mediums were the one running the churches. They were the ones who would give, give the sermons. They were the ones who were giving spirit messages and conducting healings. And all that came to an end because, of, because the priesthood wanted it to stop because they wanted to be in control. They wanted the people to come every week and put their money in the basket. And, that, and they were only concerned about the bottom line. They weren't uh, concerned about the spiritual evolution of their congregation. All they were concerned about is the money in their pockets. So, so by defining what a sin was, perhaps, that was one way uh, of people, uh, what, what, how shall I say this? Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, when so to make people afraid that they... they yeah, well, when you they, follow along blindly oh, yeah, with pr something. Yeah, pr blind and questioning fa faith. We walk in, uh, we walk in, uh, f in faith, in faith not, in, uh, not, not by sight, is one of the quotes in the New Testament. The... Um, they they created they created a whole system. This, this started with Judaism. They created a system of uh, of sins, and in order to have your sins forgiven, you'd have to bring an animal to the priest, and the priest would slaughter it and 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 cook it. And because supposedly the God wanted this, this animal in order to forgive your sins, and they sit down and have lunch. But but when lunch. when they had a feast, they had a feast, and when uh, when. The Christianity came about, they kind of got away from, from the animal sacrifices, mm -hmm. so they, they had people bring money instead. And this way, because this way they could buy whatever they wanted, the best of food, the best of clothes, the best of cars eventually, and uh, best of everything. Best of wine, of course. Yes. So they, they all lived, they lived uh, high on the hog, as they would say. So by defining sin and using that as, as, as leverage, then people would... Uh, Give, one, give them what they wanted, in fact, which helped the priest survive. Right. See, see, in okay. the New Testament, they started to link sin with the devil. And that if you follow Jesus, Jesus didn't have any sin. And if you, and if you sinned, you were of the devil because it was the devil's work. Uh, that didn't exist in Judaism because the, the, the devil was, all, Satan is only mentioned four to four or five times in the whole uh, Old Testament. So it, it developed actually in the period, a couple hundred years between the Old Testament and the New Testament that it's started to really take any kind of uh, root within Judaism, but Christianity went, went, you know, went, went to bat with it. And so therefore they also linked psychic phenomena, the mediumship, with the devil because they, um, they, was, they didn't want people to, to have access to, to the, the enlightenment coming from the other dimension. So would you say this is also the time maybe they created the notions of heaven and hell to control the people? So if you were a sinner, and you didn't confess, repent, or what have you, you were going to hell, otherwise you'd be going to heaven? The Jews, the Jewish people had a kind of hell, they called it Shoal, it was the underworld, it wasn't exactly a burning place of fire, mm. and that, was more, that was more a Christian doctrine. Okay. Yes, so that's true. Did Jesus ever talk about people needing to repent for their sins? If he did, it was the priest who put the words in his mouth. Okay. All right. He did not say that. So that isn't something that we would have gotten from him. No. I wanted okay. to know where they got the word hell from, and I was told that a group of uh, the workers, they use the term workers, um, they also use the term Christian soldiers. This was in the beginning days, I think it was either between 325 and 350, somewhere in there. They sent a whole group of people uh, to Jerusalem to get every scrap uh, of information they could, you know, the scrolls and, and, uh, and all of that. And uh, uh, there was a mountain, a small mountain there in that area. And at night, they could always see a fire burning up there at the top. They was wondering what it was. So some of the priests followed the path up and around to the top. And they got up there and they found out that it's what we today, or what we used to know as a city dump. Okay. And in the city dump, there was skeletons that had not burned down and turned into ash. And then when some of the new arrivals came, and some of these boys had already been up there, and so the other guys were asking, what is that What's going on up there? And they said, well, come on, we show you. And so they went up there in the evening and the fires are still burning because it burns, you know, perpetually. And there was these skulls had still not broken down. Hmm. But that whole place was called the hell regions because nothing would grow there. 
no trees, no bushes, no grass, no nothing. So they really call it the hell regions. And so they got the idea that if they could get the people to believe that they'll burn in hell forever, mm. this is where they got the idea because those skulls had not broken down into ash. Oh, interesting. Do you see? Okay. And that's where that comes in. This is how they created hell. And then after that, they started saying that, uh, you know, that fire and brimstone stuff, mm -hmm. that was nothing but a volcano that was spewing up into the sky. Mm -hmm. And they tried to say that hell is down there. And that is the devil, you know, throwing uh, coal on the fire or people in the fire, causing all of that, you know, all that garbage. It's yeah. all man-made. In, in Matthew chapter uh, 16, verse 18, 18, it's, it says, um, I'm reading the, the Horner Bible, which is from the, uh, I can't think of what language it is, Coptic Bible. But I also say, and I say to thee, that thou art Petros, which is usually Peter, and upon this rock I shall build my, my church. And the gates of this Bible says, Amente will not prevail against it. Many Bibles say Hades, many Bibles oh. say hell, and many say Gehenna, and Gehenna was the place that Reverend Ewers was just talking about in Jerusalem. Really? That, plate, that, that dumping ground was called Gehenna. And so th th in this verse, there's many different terms used for that particular uh, place. Now these are, seem to be controls that have been created, and again, this show is kind of a recap or a summary mm -hmm. of what we've gone into a lot of depth about in previous yeah. shows. And I'm curious as to whether uh, the Ten Commandments was also something like that that was used to control people. Yeah. With respect to it behavior. It wasn't written by God, regardless of what they say. Okay. If it was written by God, he made a big mistake. Okay. And I will tell the world that. All right. Because he didn't say one thing about the devil, nothing about the devil. He did not warn us that down at the end of the street, that man living out of the house is the devil. And if God created all of us, mm -hmm. heaven and earth and everything in between, gave a person life and could take it away, I wish somebody would tell me why this God don't zap that old bastard and get rid of him and bring peace on this planet. How many people have really ever thought of that? That's a good point. If you just simply think about that, that really yeah. doesn't make any sense. And, and, the, and the reason they didn't talk about it because it hadn't been invented yet. If you, if, you re, if you wanted to read the Bible chronologically, and mm. starting with, with Adam and Eve, so many Christians believe that, that when you read the Adam and Eve story, that it, it's dealing with, with Satan or, or the devil, which was a snake. If you read what's in Genesis, it's not there. There is no place in the Bible itself that talks about that the snake was controlled by the devil, was the devil, had anything to do with the devil, because it hadn't been created yet. That's all Christian theology that was created centuries and centuries later that they put, up, put over it because they used the whole story as a way to suppress women and say that women were inferior to men. And Jesus said that's nothing but recycled ignorance. When, when, they, when they said that, that, that God took a rib out of Adam and ma made Eve out of it, that Hebrew word's mistranslated. It really means side. Mm -hmm. he actually, soul, souls originally were both male and female. And what, what happened was, it was that, if you want to believe it this way, God separated the male aspect from the female aspect and, and, created, and created the two genders. What about Jesus dying for our sins? Was that created? Was that genuine? Did he really die for something no, horrible we all did? No, he died for the sins of the priest. Okay. If anybody came along and shot you or killed you, mm. you would be dying for the sins that they created. Mm. Isn't that, doesn't that make sense? Right. And all of these priests, they were getting all of these people worked up, telling them that he's sinful and he's this, this, and this, and this, and he would to turn everybody against him. Because, you see, they could not, they did not know what he was teaching. They didn't understand it. And so he was, people were following him and leaving them behind. There was a chance that they'd have to get out and get a job in plain English. They had to get rid of him. Okay. He was the biggest competitor they ever had. That would make sense to get rid of your competitor. In, in, in John 3:16, uh, which is a very famous verse, sometimes you'll drive along the road and you'll see people have this this sign in their in their in their front yard. For God so loved the world as to give His only begotten Son, that whoever believed in Him may not perish but have everlasting life. They they believed that God, God allowed His Son to be sacrificed in order to forgive the sins of the world. But if you go back into into, into the Old Testament and 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 the Spirit told Abraham to take his son and sacrifice him to God. And he started to do that, and then he stopped them. Mm -hmm. And then you have these, uh, these other commandments which say, don't sacrifice your, your child to God, Moloch. 
Okay, God did, was not into, into, into sacrificing children. Why would he want Jesus no. to be sacrificed for anybody's sins? This is all created okay. as, as a way to control people. Now we have a few minutes left and I wanted to hit a couple of other key topics because a couple of these really lend itself to the second book that you are going to be publishing soon. And um, this has to do with, you touch upon it a little bit, said with respect to women, um, not in the clergy, the way they've been treated throughout mm -hmm. history in the Bible, um, and that they can only speak when they're under the control of their husbands when in church. Oh, they can't speak at all in church. Or they can't speak at all. Yeah, that, okay. that's, in, that's in the 14th chapter, uh, th verse 35 and 36, or 34, 35, in, in the first book of Corinthians. And it says that women, are, it's a shame for a woman to speak in church, and she sh shouldn't do that. If she wants to ask, learn anything, let her ask her husband at home. They didn't want, want women to talk in church because they needed to silence them. Women are a lot more psychically gifted than, than men are, and that they... Um, Therefore, if we, if everyone's heard of women's intuition, mm -hmm. and it'd be very easy if a woman was addressing a, ch a church for her to slip off into a trance state and have a spirit come through and speak through, through her, uh, giving all sorts of, of, of uh, correction to church doctrine, which, it, which they didn't want. It would contradict everything that was said by that person up there. Yes. Now, isn't it true based on information that Awan had given you with respect to women in history, mm -hmm. that you went to a particular place, a site in Turkey, Mm -hmm. Yes, and the information that you got at that site is actually the foundation for your second book. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask you to just share with our viewers. We have about three minutes left. Um, a little bit about what the information you found has to do with both homosexuals and/or the clergy today. And then I'm going to wrap up after that. Well, basically, what what happened there was that the priests were abusing little girls and. The women would would uh, die very in a very early age in their, in their teens or early twenties, reincarnate to have the same thing happen over and over again. And basically, uh, the ascended masters came up with it with an idea, and they they allowed the women to cross over into male bodies, and therefore they the, was a female soul in the male body instead of a male soul. The female soul would be was attracted, however, to another male male as far as for a, a love interest. Mm -hmm. The reason they decided to do this was because they wanted to create more mediums. And this was a way for them to create more instruments of the spirit because they would blend the positive and negative energy of male and female. Spirit is both male and female. And therefore, they would make a better communicator to, to this dimension. So this was, part, this was part of their plan. The soul, the soul, as we said before, retains knowledge and it has memory of its past life experiences. It's just like some, some little children have the knack to play a musical instrument. So the, it's, it's a natural inclination. Okay. Thank you. I apologize for making you rush through that, but we mm -hmm. want to get it in during the hour. The title of the second book to be published is? Crossovers, The Origin of Homosexuality. Okay. And the first book, again, folks, at the end of the show, you're interested in this book, you can purchase it, get information. Um, we have an email address at the end of the show, and we'll be happy to share copies with you of the show. Contact the studio. I want to thank my guests, Sydney Schwartz and Reverend Carl Hewitt. And I want to thank you viewers for taking a chance to open up your mind. Until next time, be well. Mm -hmm.